Hello and welcome to this channel. My name is Victoria and in this video we will talk about acute abdomen of gynecological origin and its interdisciplinary differential diagnosis. To be able to talk about acute abdomen in gynecology, I would first like to define acute abdomen. It is not its own disease, it is more a complex of symptoms that presents with severe abdominal pain as the leading symptom and can be potentially life-threatening. It is always a medical emergency and can be caused by many different underlying conditions from all kinds of fields within medicine. Acute abdomen is often an interdisciplinary task to solve, as for example an appendicitis, Crohn's disease, cholecystitis, nephrolithiasis, intestinal torsion, infections, trauma, hematological diseases, aortic aneurysm, metabolic diseases, myocardial infarction, disc prolapse or in our case gynecological diseases can be the cause of the acute abdomen. The general symptoms of acute abdomen are a poor general health status, sudden severe abdominal pain which might be uni or bilateral, and potentially other systemic effects, such as shock. Also often there is abdominal guarding, which is the severe tension of the abdominal muscles upon palpation of the abdomen. Also often vomiting can be seen, and depending on the cause of the acute abdomen, accompanying symptoms that can give us an indicator on the cause. The abdominal pain can be different in its characteristics, depending on the etiology. We divide the types of pain into visceral pain, colicky pain and somatic pain. Visceral pain is usually a sudden cramp-like pain that is poorly localized. This pain is typical for inflammation of a hollow organ or a perforation of an ulcer. Colicky pain is a wave-like pattern of the occurrence of the pain and is often seen in ileus, and stones in the gallbladder or ureter. Somatic pain is a sharp pain which is usually well localized. A patient will point out the pain with a finger when asked to show where the pain is, while in poorly localized pain the patient usually shows it with a whole hand. Also the localization can give us an indication to where the underlying etiology might come from. If you want to know more about acute abdominal pain, you can see our video on acute abdominal pain in children, there we talk more about different causes that can also affect adults. Now I would like to switch over to acute abdomen of gynecological origin and talk a little bit more specific about those diseases and how we diagnose and treat them. Gynecologic causes for acute abdomen include pelvic inflammatory disease, ectopic pregnancy, hemorrhage from an ovarian cyst, and adnexal or ovarian torsion. Pelvic inflammatory disease is an infection that originates in the female reproduction system and then spreads into the pelvis. It is most commonly caused by the sexually transmitted bacterial infections, chlamydia and gonorrhea. This disease is usually accompanied by fever, abnormal discharge, dyspareunia, metrorhagia, dysuria, and severe abdominal pain. This abdominal pain is often bilateral, in difference to some of the other gynecological causes of acute abdomen. The treatment consists of empiric antibiotics, usually a combination of doxycycline and a cephalosporin is given. Ectopic pregnancy is a disordered pregnancy where the fertilized egg does not implant in the uterus. Instead it implants in the fallopian tube, where it will start to grow and often cause a rupture of the fallopian tube. It usually presents with severe unilateral abdominal pain, vaginal bleeding, shock and often referred pain to the shoulder, neck and rectum. Also in case of an ectopic pregnancy, Usually the regular menstruation is missed and a pregnancy test may or may not be positive, depending on how far the ectopic pregnancy proceeds. 
To treat the patient and prevent further complications, usually methotrexate is given, which will prevent the embryo from developing further. Sometimes a surgery is needed to save the patient. It usually consists of the removal of the embryo, along with a fallopian tube, called a salpingectomy, but in some cases also the opening of the fallopian tube and removal of the embryo is possible, without removing the fallopian tube. This is called salpingostomy. If you want to know more about ectopic pregnancy, you can see our video on that in the gynecology playlist. Hemorrhage from an ovarian cyst is the next cause of acute abdomen I would like to talk about. This occurs most frequently with one subtype of ovarian cysts, called a functional ovarian cyst. This is a fluid-filled cyst that develops when an oocyte is not as normally released from the ovary, but is rather kind of stuck inside the ovary and fluid accumulates around it. The cyst usually resolves spontaneously, but in some rare cases it can rupture and cause a hemorrhage and the blood can go into the pelvis and lower abdomen. If you want to know more about ovarian cysts, you can see our video on that in the gynecology playlist as well. The last cause I want to talk about is adnexal or ovarian torsion. The adnexa of the uterus are the ovaries, fallopian tubes and their associated vessels, ligaments and connective tissue. An adnexal or ovarian torsion can affect the ovary, fallopian tubes and the ligaments that support them. It usually leads to the vessels that supply them becoming obstructed and so to an infarction of the ovary. If left untreated, it can lead to necrosis of the ovary. An adnexal or ovarian torsion often occurs idiopathically and no pathology has to be underlying, but an ovarian cyst can make it more likely to occur. A torsion occurs usually only in one side, so the patient often experiences a unilateral abdominal pain and often nausea and vomiting. Other symptoms include fever and metroragia. The only curative treatment for avarian torsion is an emergency surgery where the ovary is untwisted and if a cyst is found on the ovary, it is usually surgically removed. How can we diagnose acute abdomen? As this is a medical emergency, we want to ensure the safety of the patient by assessing the vital signs of the patient. If the patient is in a state of shock, with severe hypotension, we first have to eliminate possibilities of really super acute conditions, such as aortic dissection or myocardial infarction. ECG for MI and an X-ray for aortic dissection will be appropriate if any of these life-threatening conditions require immediate treatment is suspected. When the general health status of the patient allows it, we perform a thorough investigation of the abdomen. Then first we inspect the abdomen. We want to see if there is any swelling, protrusion or change in color of the skin. After that we auscultate the abdomen. This can be especially conclusive for the occurrence of an ileus. In a paralytic ileus, there will be the absence of peristalsis, while in a mechanic ileus, there will be an increase in peristalsis before the obstruction and a lack of peristalsis further distal to the obstruction. After that follows the palpation. Here we first want to do a superficial palpation of the different areas of the abdomen, and if the pain allows it, a deep palpation of the abdomen. The patient will usually tell us in which area or areas the pain is the most severe. In case of a peritonitis, there will usually be a rebound tenderness of the abdomen and severe diffuse pain over the entire surface of the abdomen. Other diagnostic measures include a sonography, abdominal CT and an X-ray of the thorax. For the gynecologic causes of acute abdomen, also a transvaginal sonography should be considered. The laboratory examination should be checked for changes in the inflammatory markers, blood glucose, creatinine kinase, liver enzymes, blood clotting, the urine status, and also a pregnancy test should be done if an ectopic pregnancy is suspected. 
depending on the suspected cause, also an ECG or endoscopy can be considered. The treatment is first of all to stabilize the patient until we find out the cause of the acute abdomen. When we figured out the diagnosis, the goal is to treat the underlying condition as soon as possible. To alleviate the pain immediately, it is usually recommended to lift the bed rest slightly and to make the patient's feet stand on the bed with the knee being flexed. This position leads to a relaxation of the abdominal muscles and so helps to reduce the pain until further knowledge is gained about the cause of the acute abdomen. Just to make sure that you have an IV access in case of shock, it is recommended to put two IV ports immediately. Against colicky pain, spasmolytics and analgesics are usually recommended. Further treatment depends on the cause of the acute abdomen and should be treated as soon as the diagnosis is made. The differential diagnosis list for acute abdomen is long, so it is important to find a clear indication of what the cause might be. Treatment of the underlying condition can be surgical or conservatively. That's it for this video, I hope it was helpful and if you like our channel, please subscribe. Thank you for watching and hopefully see you again in the next video.